just over two minutes, Alistair Overeem flipped the Combat Sports world on its axis, finishing Badr Hari in the first round at K1 Dynamite. The result was a major win, not just for Overeem, but also for the MMA community. To MMA fans and pundits, it helped validate their sport. It proved that MMA fighters can fight against the best of the best in respective disciplines and not only compete, but win. To the kickboxing community, it was just one fight. Surely if Overeem kept fighting great kickboxers, things would even out, right? He fought against Wadahari, top talent, and now he has to face Remy Bonyaski. Played a big role thinking that, you know, I have to defend all the K1 fighters, you know, the organization. And it was not my best fight. It was not my best fight. First round, I think I lost the round. The second round was maybe even. And in the third round, I clipped him with a straight right and he went down. So it was 10-8. Was then I won the fight, but still, I didn't smash him. I didn't, you know, knock him out or show the world that I was a lot better. The loss to Bonyoski, however, would prove to be just a minor setback for Overeem. In September of 2009, he would outclass the great Peter Arts, earning a spot in the 2009 K1 World Grand Prix and solidifying himself as one of the best heavyweight kickboxers on the planet. You know, I, I, uh, I, I don't like excuses, you know, for, for, for losses. Uh, when you lose, you lose because you choose to fight and uh, you know what the consequence can be. Hari took the loss to Overeem in stride. He made no excuses. He vowed to get better and improve. However, nobody could have expected just how much better he would get. So, Butter Hurry loses to Alistair Overeem, devastatingly so, at Dynamite. So he goes back to Europe. He fights on at Showtime, and he gets back to the Butter Hurry we used to love. He gets back to the wrecking machine. After shocking Semi Shilt, Hari would make quick work of Zabit Samidov the same night Overeem defeated Arts, earning his spot in the 2009 K1 WGP. The stakes for a K1 Grand Prix are already high. At the pre tournament press conference, Hari and Overeem raised them even further. I was waiting for a year for that rematch because. Uh... In a year, I was like really ashamed. I was like, you know, this guy knocked me out. When I see the drawing, I was like, okay, I got your ass now. You know, I was in a good shape. I got a good preparation and I learned from the first fight. So the whole tournament for me didn't, I didn't was focusing on winning the tournament. I was just focusing on winning from Alistair and uh, get my revenge back. I challenge any of these fighters, any K1 fighter to come step in the, in the octagon or the ring with me. I'm gonna give them two to three minutes and I'll finish them. Overeem really is playing with house money at this time. You know what I'm saying? He's an MMA guy. They got to stop with me. One more thing. As uh, you may or may not know, my friend Buddy already declined the MMA fight with me. So I'm just waiting for any of the other fighters to step up. MMA fight, you're always welcome. Thanks very much. I remember Butter saying, we can't let this guy win. He's coming from MMA. We can't let him win. The K1 Grand. Anybody could win but him. I know. Bada, please, if you'd like to respond. Uh, I had a fight with uh, Alistair Overeem, like everybody knew. Uh, he won that fight. It's uh, strange uh, for us as kickboxers that this guy. Uh, wins from two strong guys in the K1. He did a good job. So, uh, good thing for him. <laughs> but, uh, if he gets through the first fight, 
against Teixeira, then I promise that he won't make it two until three minutes in the kickboxing ring with me this time. <laughs> The tournament draw placed Hari and Overeem on the same side of the bracket. They could beat each other in the semifinals, but would have to win their quarterfinal matches first. They did just that, and they did it emphatically. Hari needed just 39 seconds to run through Ruslan Karyev, and Overeem needed just over a minute to knock Ayrton Teixeira out cold. Both men would enter their semifinal matchup against each other at 100%, setting the stage for a classic. So this time, Bader comes out punching. So like he didn't come out with his normal kickboxing game. It was clear to me that he was going to sit on something power and win with his leg. This time, over him, because of the bigger Bader Hari, the first time they got close to each other, he launched him and threw him on the ground. And I remember when he did that, I was like, okay, he's sending a message. I know the bigger version of you is bigger, but it ain't beating me. You know, like, like it's not, you're not going to win with physical strength. So then they kept, you know, exchanging and, and it wasn't a very clean fight. Overeem tried to find some of the same tricks before, but because Badahari didn't sit on the kickboxing and he didn't stay still, whenever they got close, he would launch heavy and then they have like a clinch up moment. The fight was restarted, like there was a, a break, and after the break, Badahari is already in position. So he watches Overeem come, comes close, he lands a right hand while Overeem is trying to land a hook because the hooks what got him in trouble the first time. So Overeem's really throwing the hook as the right hand comes clean, he goes down and he's in trouble. And then as he gets the count, Bada does a good job of not jumping on him right away. He goes out there, he's, he's methodical, he's looking for a shot, he realizes he's still in trouble. This is incredible. After this lands and the victories happen, Michael Chevelle is going absolutely crazy. And the camera goes to him and he's cheering and he's like waving as the fight's happening to see them celebrate, to see them like hug each other, to see them, you know, uh, the three of them, Kogan and so on. It's, it, it was a special, special moment for kickboxing.